So the machine uses surface topography, which shines small stripes of light on the patient's back, and it takes a photograph and converts that photograph into a 3D surface model of the patient's back. And then what's unique about this system is the correlation model to turn that surface topography model into a 3D spine reconstruction. And so that's the basics of how it works. The difference between 3D and 4D would be adding time. And so a 3D takes a single moment in time, whereas a 4D takes multiple images over a short period of time, like six seconds, and averages them together to get better reproducibility. And then the 4D motion would be putting that same machine in front of the patient who's moving or walking and getting many, many images over a little bit longer period of time to show their body in motion. So I would say that it's not um, suitable for every age group. A, a newborn, for instance, uh, would not be able to participate. But as soon as the patient can stand comfortably, follow instructions, and be able to walk on a treadmill, then you could do all of these exams. So I would say probably starting at age five or six, um, it would be reasonable to have a patient standing still and following instructions and then walking on a treadmill for a motion exam. I think then if we look at the upper age group, um, Static examinations can be done as long as the patient can stand without, um, without assistance or without falling over. And on the treadmill, then, you'd want to be a little more careful to make sure that the patient can walk comfortably on a treadmill at whatever speed you choose and that there's not a danger of them falling. And I would say everyone in between those two age groups would benefit from having a measurement with this system. So I would say that this system can be used by uh, physicians who are taking care of the spine, and that was probably the initial market, um, but it can be expanded to physicians who are taking care of other problems, neurologic problems like stroke or neuromuscular disease, balance problems. It can also be used by therapists, uh, physical therapists who are trying to rehabilitate the patient. Um, they could use it for rehabilitating injuries, for sports performance enhancement, um, for a variety of other uh, assessments that the therapist might want to use. Uh, could also be used by the foot and ankle specialist, a podiatrist or, a, or an orthotist that's making inserts for the shoes. Uh, could be used by an orthotist who's making leg braces or spine braces. Um, so I would say there's a variety of, uh, of healthcare providers that would be interested in this information. So um, patients with spine deformity were the initial um, patient population that, that was thought of with this uh, piece of equipment, and I think it does a wonderful job uh, evaluating spine deformity and trunk deformity. But beyond that, uh, patients with problems in their hips or their knees or their feet can certainly benefit from the gait analysis. Um, patients with sports injuries who need to have uh, an initial evaluation and a follow-up evaluation to see if they've healed. Um, patients with other traumatic injuries, fractures or uh, overuse injuries in their extremities would be a good uh, patient group for this. Um, patients with neurologic problems, uh, stroke, um, uh, neuromuscular disease, weakness of any kind, balance problems of any kind, all of those patients would benefit from this type of evaluation. So uh, the patients benefit from this in a variety of ways. First of all, it's non-radiographic, so they can have a number of exams that can be done over and over without exposing them to any radiation, any harm whatsoever. So uh, patients appreciate the ability to have this evaluation without any risk to them. Second of all, it is uh, an output, a, a user interface that's understandable not only by the clinician with lots of training, but it's very understandable by the patient. So it helps them see their own body and understand much better what's wrong with them 
and how they're making improvements and how things are changing over time. And if you want to engage patients in their own health and you want to engage them in uh, their rehabilitation and getting better, having them understand more fully what's wrong with them and what things they need to improve really is a big benefit for the patient. Um, finally, I think that it's a, um, it's a picture that they not only understand but they can save and use for comparison later. And so it helps quite a bit for the patient to come in and see their old exam and remember what the problem was months ago and then to look at their new exam and see the changes that have occurred and understand a little better what they've been working on and, and be able to measure their, their accomplishments and their improvements with therapy. Um, so in using this uh, piece of equipment in clinical practice, I certainly found that, um, number one, my um, threshold for using it was very low because it had no radiation and I didn't need to worry about exposing the patient to any harm. So it made it very easy to say yes to an examination and to get the information that was useful to me uh, in making a clinical assessment. Uh, the second thing is that it was very fast and so it, it took only moments to send the patient down the hall to have a scan and to come back and to be able to discuss those results. Um, even a motion analysis, which takes a few more minutes than a standard scan, um, is able to easily be done in just a few minutes and you can bring it back and while the patient's examination is still very fresh in your mind, you can look at the results with the patient and discuss it with them. When we used to send patients away to a gate lab, it took many weeks to get them in and get an evaluation and bring them back. And you sort of had to start the discussion over again. And so it's very nice to have it right in the clinic. Um, it also takes up very little space, so it was very easy to find a place to put the machine. Um, unlike x-ray, we didn't need to build a special room with lead-lined walls and electricity and all the different things that would be needed for a bigger machine. This easily fit into an exam room, and if for some reason we change the configuration of the clinic, it's easy to move into a different room. Um, and, and I guess finally it's affordable, and um, it was a piece of equipment that we were able to uh, pay for easily with patient uh, revenues from the scans that we did, and so it wasn't a big financial burden on the practice.